Welcome to the Cadence Developer Chronicles, part two. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a peek behind the curtain and discovering some of the tools and technology behind the sound of Cadence. Cadence, like many other indie games, is built inside the very popular Unity game engine. It's a great engine, but for the kind of audio experience that we're hoping to create in Cadence, its features are a little bit limiting. So to get around these limitations, we ended up turning to a technology called Pure Data. Quite simply, Pure Data is a visual programming language with a particular focus on audio signal processing. It's used in a lot of different arenas, uh, such as live sound, interactive installations, museum exhibits. But really, I think for me, the best way to explain what Pure Data is really about is quite simply for me to show you an example. So here we have an empty Pure Data sketch. To do anything pure in Pure Data, what you need to do is you need to create objects. So to start off with, let's create an oscillator object. Now all this is going to do is this is going to generate a sine wave frequency signal for us. In this case, at 440 hertz. Now, in Pure Data, to hear this sound, what you need to do is you need to root it somewhere. So in this case, let's create a DAC object or digital audio converter, which is really just a proxy for your sound card. And just to spare our ears, uh, let's turn that down a bit because otherwise it's going to be very loud. Uh, sort of turn that down but to 0.2. And then much like Cadence in Pure Data, to actually sort of route the flow of audio signal, you have to connect objects together. And you do that by sort of using these edges, as you can see here. Okay, so now when I turn on the processing, you hear a sine wave. It's not a particularly attractive sound, but it's sound nonetheless. Okay, so now what happens when we take that further is we end up with something like this. This is the very first synthesizer created specifically for Cadence inside of Pure Data. Um, it's a lot more complicated than the example I just showed you. Uh, you know, there's loads of modules and each of those modules has a lot of sort of sub logic going inside each of one, each of them. But essentially the premise remains the same. Okay, so let's let's recreate what we just did there. Um, we're gonna create. We're gonna play a sine wave again. Uh, sorry, I need to turn on processing. Okay, so there you go, a sine wave. Now the only difference is that this time I am triggering the sound from a MIDI keyboard, and as you can see. When I play different notes, the frequency of the note changes. And that's really all that notes are, is different frequencies of waves. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a second sine wave, and we're gonna feed that into the first. And what you're gonna notice as we do this is that the harmonics of the sound are gonna become a lot more complex. Now, this is a module of synthesis known as frequency modulation. And frequency modulation was popularized by one synthesizer in particular from the 1980s. And the thing that's remarkable about that time period is they didn't really have a lot of computing power to play around. So they had to find these novel methods of creating interesting sounds, but still staying within their performance constraints. And that's why we chose that synthesizer for Cadence, because in real-time games, we have very similar constraints in terms of the fact that, you know, every single frame, the game has to render all of its assets and do a whole bunch of things other than just generating sound. So in other words, we're also operating within quite a constrained performance environment. 
So the great thing about frequency modulation is it's a model that allows you to get a great deal of variation um, out of a very simple premise. So for example, you know, you could get quite a sort of narrow contained sound like this. Or else you could quite easily get something really rich and harmonically complex, perhaps a bit like this. Let's try a few different sounds to see what else is possible. So each of these sounds that you've just heard stems from the same principles that we showed you of frequencies modulating other frequencies. Next up, we're going to take a peek at how we might create one of those presets that you just heard. First thing you might notice is that we no longer have the graphical interface from Pure Data. That's because in order to use Pure Data inside Unity, we have to embed it as a plugin. What that means is that it now only exists in code. So to get around that, what I'm doing is I have an iPad application that allows me to create custom MIDI interfaces. And MIDI is it's a standardized music messaging format. So in other words, what happens is when I press a button or turn a dial on the iPad, it sends a MIDI message to Unity, and Unity in turn sends that on to Pure Data. So most of what you can see me doing here is just tweaking and playing around with parameters and sort of gradually massaging the sound into something I find pleasurable. You can now hear me modulating two different waves panned left and right. The two waves modulating against each other creates this very rich, full stereo effect. A huge thank you to everyone who voted for Cadence on Greenlight. We have in fact been greenlit, which is fantastic news. It means we'll be coming to Steam in the not too distant future. To find out when that future is, head on over to our website www.madewithmasterlove where you can get future updates as well as sign up for our newsletter. That's all for now. Cheerio!